the most amazing tartar tan. Are those pink peppercorns? They are pink peppercorns. Mm, they're really good. Are they we... don't taste anything no. like black peppercorns. Quite sweet, aren't they? They're really sweet, very mm. fruity. The pink peppercorns give it the sweetness. The black peppercorns give the heat. Now, what is that, baby? Vanilla. This is one of the easiest desserts in the world to make, but one of the most delicious. It's a sort of take on the classic apple or pear to tan, but when you caramelise those bananas with the peppercorns and the vanilla... I bet that tastes amazing. Oh, my goodness. Incredible. OK, we're going to make the caramel. Start off with the cold pen first, and you just press that butter in there. How come do you do it like that and not let it just melt naturally? Mm -hmm. Because I want the butter to stay cold, because I'm going to stick the bananas in there. OK. And then we'll make the caramel and caramelise the bananas at the same time. Oh, okay. So, in goes those... Vanilla. Vanilla seeds. Pods in there as well. OK, peppercorns done? Yeah, they're all done. Good girl. Sprinkle them over that butter. Just naturally? Naturally, yeah. Nice. And then, look, just very carefully, sprinkle sugar over that. You're doing them all the same size. Roughly the same size. Wedge it into the butter. Well, do you know what? I want the bananas really caramelised. You just stop them between. If you cram them in like this, OK, it will stop them moving around. Nothing's moving. Nothing is. OK, so yeah. all wedged in there. Spring the peppercorns on top of the bananas so you've got that flavour in the caramel and on the top and the bottom. Right, puff pastry. Puff pastry is difficult and time-consuming to make, so I always buy ready-made when I'm at home. To get the best flavour and texture, go for the all-butter type and keep your pastry cold before using it. And this is where it gets really exciting. You get your fingers and you just pinch the end, so you thin the end. If you can do that for me yeah. very carefully, you have to be quick, because the heat of your fingers can melt the pastry. How comes you do it, Dad? Because we get it nice and thin so we can clip it underneath. Now, we take a spoon and what we do is lift up that banana and tuck it underneath. See? Lift up like the banana. Like a parcel. Like a parcel. And see the thin bits of pastry? Yeah. How easy it is to get it underneath. Yeah. And that's why you thin them out. Lift you do up. it so quickly. Well, because I have to be quick, otherwise the pastry will melt. Notice how we're not using anything sharp, so we're not... Just would that cut the pastry if you... That's right. See how locked down that is? Mm-hmm. Gas on. We're going to start caramelising that. Those three little holes are so important. Mm -hmm. If we didn't put a hole in the pastry... and uh, It will cause a lot of steam, so the pastry never cooks, it just goes really soggy. OK. So, really important. The caramel's live now. We're working the caramel. Give it a little shake. How can you see the caramel through the pastry? And look what happens when it tilts. Oh, yeah. See? All comes running down. See? Oh, yeah, I see. Now that pastry, OK, is, like, clinging on to the bananas. And so when we turn it upside down, we've got this glove full of these caramelised bananas. Look at that. Wow. It looks a locky. Look a locky. <laughs> <laughs> look a locky. Ah, look a likey. Got you now, baby. You're so look -a annoying. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. <laughs> uh, it's your birthday soon. 15. I've just worked it out. On my 50th, you're 18. Perfect. We should do a joint party. Yeah, love it. 12 to 4 for the old ones. 12 lunchtime. Lunchtime till 4 for the old mm. ones so they can go to sleep. Me Megan, please. And then please. we'll go on later. Come on. Perfect. This is where I get excited now. Look at the colour of that caramel. So, tilt the pan again. See how dark it is now? Yeah. Wow, it's gone a lot darker now. 20 minutes in the oven at 190 to 200 degrees for our banana tartar tan. So, see now where that pastry is caramelising. Caramel, so dark. And just a little tip. Gas back on, and that will release it. Because if you tip it and it's still sticking, mm -hmm. then some of your bananas will stick. Oh, yeah. So now, you see when it starts spinning yeah, around you can like see that? It's moving around. A it's lot. moving around. And here we are, the moment of truth, when you know your daddy is the best chef in the world. Hmm. Ready? Yep. Wow. Boom. Look at the vanilla. How delicious it is that? It looks amazing. It smells it? really good as well. My version of a classic, a glorious lavender creme caramel for dessert. 
The first job is the lavender sugar. You can buy this ready-made or simply add dried edible sprigs of lavender to caster sugar and store. You can also try this trick with vanilla pods and cinnamon to bring new subtle flavors to sweets and baking. For the creme caramel, melt plain caster sugar until it turns dark golden. Pour into ramekins, sprinkle with lavender flowers and cool. Now, to make a simple custard, gently heat whole milk in a pan until steaming. Meanwhile, whisk together egg, vanilla seeds and lavender sugar until golden and fluffy. Then gradually pour the hot milk into the mix, whisking continuously until the custard is smooth and creamy. To set, cook in a water bath or bain-marie. A good tip is to line a roasting tin with a cloth to stop the ramekins jiggling around. Pour your custard, then boiling water around the ramekins until halfway up the sides. Then cook in a preheated oven for around 30 minutes until set. Cool in the fridge. Then when you're ready to serve, dip the ramekins in hot water to loosen the creme caramel. Et voilà, lavender creme caramel. So if you unwrap the chocolate, start breaking it up in little bits. We're going to make the most amazing white chocolate mousse. Our first job is to bring half of our cream up to the boil. So what kind of cream is that in there, Dad? That is double cream, OK? So that's going to make a really nice, rich chocolate mousse. What's your favourite sort of chocolate? Is it white, milk, dark? Um, I love white and milk. What's yours? I absolutely love milk chocolate. Oh, that's my guilty pleasure. Is it really? Here we go. Cream in. So that goes in there. Now, you can see what's happening straight away, can't you? It's melting really quickly. It's melting really quickly, so... OK. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Alicia, your jumper's white, so you won't spot it. Yeah, and I've got a nice little snack for later. <laughs> in another bowl, add lime zest, cold cream, and whisk until it forms soft peaks. The lime cuts the sort of richness of the cream, and that starts to make the chocolate mousse taste a little bit lighter. It smells really good. The lime gives it a really nice zinginess. Zinginess, you're absolutely right. Next, add to the melted chocolate mixture. And because I'm whisking, it's just getting lighter and lighter okay. and lighter. Have a little taste. Mmm. Nice? Yeah, the lime gives it a really nice taste. Tilly, I need the rest for the mousse. I need some for my tummy. No, come on. Chocolate mousse into the fridge. Our next job is to separate out three egg whites. This is where I need you at your absolute best, OK? Because to whip those whites is going to be really tough. So we'll take it in turns, 30 seconds each, OK? You go first. 10 seconds gone. Come on, Tilly. 15 seconds gone. 20 seconds gone. Come on, you can do it. 10 seconds to go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And change. Excellent. Hold the bowl. Right. No. No way! Gina! Oh, what? <laughs> Come on. That, it's over, Dad. <laughs> Matilda! That's you can't it. walk out and do You it. can't do that to me. <laughs> 30 seconds. This puny little thing, and you come with this big little machine gun. Because. <laughs> That's the best way of whipping up egg whites. But why didn't I do it that way? <laughs> you start tipping that sugar in slowly. Good girl. Still not very happy, you know. So, <laughs> our contentious whipped egg whites will make our mousse light and airy. And when they've reached soft peaks, we can gently mix in our cooled white chocolate and cream mixture. Once the egg whites hit the cream, yeah. the chocolate sets, the egg whites keep the cream nice and fluffy, and you get this nice, light mousse in the bowl. Now, I need you to crush some raspberries, please, with some fresh mint. I can see all the juice coming out. Now, take your mousse. Wow, that looks really cool. Now, look at that down the bottom there, look. A crushed raspberry. Delicious. And the mint. Now, I'm going to set that in the fridge. If you could be so kind, open the door, please. Our yummy white chocolate mousse will take at least two hours to set. Holly! Darling, you going to help Daddy with the dessert? 
Yes, please. And the lamb cutlets. Now, we all know that you love desserts. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> we'll do a little yoghurt parfait with some macerated fruits. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to take a tablespoon of icy sugar, dust that over the fruits. Good. Now... Is that enough? Or... That's perfect, darling. Thank you. Zest the orange over the fruits. And what's going to happen now is going to start to sort of marinate. I'm going to put some basil in there. That'll make it really flavoursome. Fresh basil in. And then we need to give that little mix-up. I'm going to squeeze some fresh orange juice in there. Nice and gently. OK. How gorgeous do those berries look now? Very. So we just leave them to marinate, OK? And that's what we call macerated berries. Now for the mango sundae. Right, mangoes in, please. I love mangoes. Nice. Now, they're naturally sweet, OK? On. Oh, that smells incredible. Now, how fresh does that smell? Very. Now, you love art, right? Yeah, I do. So you're going to put these together. So a nice little dollop of mango at the bottom, nice and slowly. Once each glass has a layer of mango puree at the bottom, spoon over a layer of thick natural yoghurt and alternate until the glass is full. Well done. Now, they look yummy. from there, you get your berries. You sit your berries on top. They taste so fresh. But now they've been marinated and mm. the berries have been slightly macerated. And then finally, look, get your oyster sugar and just tap on top. They look beautiful. <laughs> now, they sit in the fridge to get nice and chilled, OK? So, if I take three and promise not to sneeze, and you take one and open the fridge door, 